If we ever looked up from our own phones, we'd see it. Everyone everywhere looking down. It's like a like protection kind of. You feel like you're in your bubble because I'm looking at my phone like this person's not going to look at me or like this stranger's not going to like make eye contact with me. Kelsey Morgan admits she can't imagine life without it. Most of the time we're just texting in our group chat. We also have like a Snapchat group chat where we like We'll Snapchat like all day. A busy college student who's also a producer here at KXLY, she still somehow finds plenty of time to check in and get lost. I checked this three minutes ago. There's nothing new here and you're just wasting your time going from app to app, but it's like, what else would I do? And mindless scrolling isn't just for Kelsey's generation. I spend a good percentage of my morning and evening on my phone. During the day when I'm at work, I try to be on it less, but on weekends, it's constant. Phaedra Hansen is a working single mom, smart, well-read, really busy with adorable two-year-old Sebastian. One look at her Snapchat will tell you she's hooked. Why do I sit down to look at it for five minutes and then an hour goes by and I'm still doing the same thing? I, I don't know. To be honest, I find myself like Pavlov. I've been trained to pick it up and I'm looking at it Mike Welch doesn't even have social media on his phone, but this busy financial planner still spends plenty of time texting his wife and kids, shopping, and other important apps he has to check. NFL, check the NFL. That's really important. <laughs> Unlike Kelsey and Phaedra, Mike remembers life before we had the world at our fingertips, before we felt like slaves to every notification, decades ago in a fishing village in Alaska. We had barely a satellite television if the weather was right. And I devoured books. I never read so much in my life, and I was an English major, you know. And I really consider that time of my life, uh, my mind awakened because of that right there. You don't have that, that silent, meditative, prayer-like, just let your mind wander. How did we get to this point that we'd have to isolate ourselves in a remote village to finally break free? And what's it doing to our brains? I quote someone who says, yeah, the only people who call their customers users are uh, drug dealers and technologists. And, and we're not okay with that. Journalist and podcast host Manoush Zamarodi set out to do something about it. But I think what we've seen over the last couple of years is that more and more people are starting to be in touch with not just the wonderful things that our gadgets give us, but some of the not so wonderful things that they give us. In her book, Bored and Brilliant, Manoush lays out the science behind what constant exposure to tech is doing to us. Things like the mere presence of tech, even just lying there, can lower the empathy exchanged between friends. We're switching between tasks every 45 seconds. Every time we respond to a ping or notification, it takes on average 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get back to what we're doing. And the key message, all this information constantly a click away keeps our brains busy. We never zone out, which means our brains aren't open to creativity and new ideas. They're dealing with information overload. They're feeling as though they're maybe addicted to their devices, or they're also feeling like their devices are not acting as tools. They're not necessarily improving their lives as much as they're supposed to. They've been kind of turned into taskmasters. She put listeners of her podcast to the test, track your phone use, and take a few simple steps to cut back. In that study, participants check their phones 40 to 50 times a day. Some, like me, as high as 150 times a day. So what's the answer? We're not gonna quit cold turkey. Totally, that is the key to it. This is not a digital detox. It's not on or off, right? Like most of us can't live like that. But we can take steps to take back some control, get back a few hours a week, open our brains to the world. We put Kelsey, Phaedra, and Mike through the challenge, trying to get Kelsey out of her phone and back into the world around her, free up some time for Phaedra to get some books read and free up time with Sebastian, and get Mike back to that fishing village in Alaska. Mind clear, ready to be brilliant. Now, we want you to get bored too. Just wake up every morning knowing that there are other folks going through it with you. And with Melissa to lead you, I think you are in good hands. Well, it's one thing to know we need to put our phone down in the car. I mean, it's the law in Washington after all. But when I really struggle is how often I look at my phone when I'm just moving from one place to another, in my house or here at work. This first challenge had me checking myself instead of my phone. 
in the car, on the bus, and most dangerously walking across the street, these phones are always in our hands, calling for us to pick them up, even when we know we shouldn't. I use it when I'm driving to text back or to look at my maps, but then I'll catch myself watching Snapchat stories. And I'm like, why am I watching a Snapchat story? I'm driving. When I asked Phaedra Hansen the habit she most wanted to break, that was it. But for Kelsey Morgan, driving wasn't the problem. It's simply walking down the street. If I was walking anywhere else by myself, I definitely would be on my phone. It's like a, like, protection kind of. You feel like you're in your bubble. Before you hear how they did with Challenge 1, here's why it matters. We look at our phones while in transit for a couple of reasons, mostly because we're bored and we want to be efficient. Why just walk to the bathroom when you can answer a text or two along the way? But it's keeping us from taking in the world around us. Research in the book Bored and Brilliant shows people check their phones more during the day if they keep them in their hand or in their pocket rather than put away somewhere. We tasked our three challenge participants to try it just for one day. At work, I did really good. I was a success, but when I was driving, I was more not a success. Um, I don't want to say I completely failed. She had some work phone calls, which is expected, but did notice a difference elsewhere. And then at work, I left it behind at my desk a lot when I'd walk around. So um, it felt really nice to not have it on me. As for financial planner Mike Welch. I'm going to pretty much uh, sit still. Yeah, nice try, Mike. But really, he wasn't too worried. This financial planner doesn't have social media on his phone and doesn't consider himself addicted. But he did notice a change right away on the drive to work. That I've created that habit. I never used to have that habit. You know, you're at, you're at a stop and you just instinctually check your phone to see if something's there. Most of the times nothing, nothing's there. So that was actually kind of cool on Monday. It was put away and I was just enjoying just driving and being in the moment. When he was in the office, he kept it down, out of the way. And the result? He only picked up his phone 26 times that day. And as for college student Kelsey... It wasn't that hard, but I didn't find myself, you know, having that urge to grab my phone and having to sort of fight that. Um, but it was good when you, you know, don't reach for your phone and then you can actually pick your head up and see, oh, that's a nice tree. It was good. It was eye-opening, I guess. So by now, we're all in the trust tree, right? The no judgment zone. Okay, so here's my confession. This is the one step of the challenge I can't complete. I mean, I can probably, but I haven't yet. The step is relatively simple. Just for one day, delete the one app that sucks the most of your time. Sounds easy? Well, good for you. For me, it's Twitter. I just can't seem to quit. Even on a Sunday, away from an excuse that I need it for work, I check Twitter at least a couple of times an hour. And our college student, Kelsey, has the same problem. It's like this anxiety constantly of like, I'm gonna miss, you know, what Trump tweeted or like, I'm gonna miss things that are happening. Single mom Phaedra's app of choice is one you probably use the most too. She can't help but get lost in Facebook. I clean an office on once a week and it should take me about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and I'll go check a text or something and then I'll start scrolling and it takes me three hours almost every time I do it and I'm like why this list should take an hour and a half and it's because I just get sucked in every time. It's pretty typical says author and journalist Manoush Namarodi. She literally wrote the book about our brains and tech and knows we often feel powerless against the lure of the scroll. There is a study that says that people are more likely to check Facebook when they're sleep deprived which I think makes total sense, right? It is like, just like you're saying, you're, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and you're not even reading what you're scrolling. It's also been described as it's a slot machine for your brain, right? What might come up? Something interesting might come up. Uh, it could be like breaking news. That's why our home screens are riddled with apps, constant connections right at our fingertips. Her research shows that when we're online, we're switching between tasks every 45 seconds. All that switching means a little more stress, especially when every app notifies you of messages and information. The pinging, the constant pinging is making people feel as though they just can't do the deep work. Deleting just one app can lower not only the stress, but the screen time. Financial planner Mike isn't a social media guy, so he deleted the Safari app. The link to the internet cut off for just one day wasn't that big of a deal for him. He didn't even miss it, but it did remind him of what he's learned from our challenge so far. This has forced me to kind of weed out the uh, nonsensical or stuff that I don't really need to use my phone for. 
and check out Kelsey. She deleted the Twitter app for just one day and cut her screen time in half. Um, it wasn't actually that hard because I actually had to delete the app off my phone. Um, I think if I had it on my phone still, I would catch myself looking at it like once an hour and then have to like put it away. As for me, I'm not quite strong enough to delete Twitter from my phone just yet. Melissa, come on. It's just a day, you know, it's just a day. So I'm working on it, I promise, I will get there. The idea behind this is not to delete your accounts altogether, but deleting the apps will force you to go online to access things like Facebook, meaning you're making a conscious choice to access that information. Those who completed this challenge in the book it's based on found themselves deleting the apps completely, or even declaring things like Twitter free Mondays to get a little peace. Sounds pretty brave to me. I'm Melissa Lett, KXLY4 News. Well, think about the last time you really, truly unplugged. It was probably on vacation, and maybe because you couldn't get service if you wanted to. Well, today we try to replicate that, even just for an hour or two, and take a vacation from our phones. And in my free time, I'd rather be away uh, from the computer or away from the phone. So I'm more of a face-to-face, -face, I guess, yeah, I'm just a face-to-face -face guy. In part one of our series, we met dad, husband, and financial planner Mike Welch and learned he's not as addicted to his phone as some, but that he does worry what all this screen time is doing to his kids and to us. To be honest, I find myself like Pavlov. I've been trained to pick it up and I'm looking at it. We used to leave school at school, leave work when we left the office at night. Now we carry it all with us and go to bed with it on our nightstands. Always connected to email, always connecting with friends. Extraordinarily helpful at times, potentially damaging at others. A 2016 study shows 30% of us do a significant amount of work when we're supposed to be on vacation. Half of us don't use all our vacation time to begin with. I mean, that's great if you go on vacation and you turn it off, more power to you. But on a daily basis, we need to be connected. We want to be connected. And so what we're talking about is finding where we fit somewhere in the middle. In step four of the challenge, we find that middle. Take a vacation. Whether it's an hour or an entire afternoon, truly unplug and tell those around you they can't reach you just for a bit. Our three challenge participants nailed it. I didn't send you a video because I was supposed to put my phone away, so I put my phone away and I didn't pick it back up. I was able to just put it down, turn it on silent, turned off my notifications on my watch, and I did some work on the computer, and uh, it was great. Even admitted phone addict Kelsey Morgan, who's really busy with a full class load at Gonzaga and a job here at KXLY, managed to find some time. When I was eating my lunch, instead of you know, scrolling through my phone while I ate my salad, I tried to pick my head up and, you know, put my phone in my backpack and it was the longest 10 minutes of my day. <laughs> I was in a building that I'm in probably every day and um, looking up, I noticed posters that I had never seen before. I actually heard the music that was playing. Um, I saw people I don't see. I'm, I feel like I even like tasted my food more. 10 minutes might not sound like much to you, but it's those baby steps, these small breaks that can add up. A little bit of calm in a flurry of information. A little vacation from it all. I'm Alyssa Luck, KXLY4 News. Well, there's no reason to be bored and zone out anymore. In the airport, in the checkout line, in the car while we wait for our kids, we can simply grab our phones and get lost. In a text, watching a movie, we can engage the trolls on Twitter. We can do anything. So what happens if we just put the phones away and observe? First of all, I love observing people because I think people are drippy and they're really fun to watch. Mike Welch is right. But with all this time spent buried in our phones, the art of people watching seems to be a lost one. That's why step five was so eye-opening for our challenge participants, Kelsey, Phaedra, and Mike. For Phaedra, it was an evening spent with her boyfriend and kids. It was nice to not have my phone on me and to be paying attention to the moment. For college student Kelsey, a walk across Gonzaga's campus became a sociological experiment. Everyone, or I'd say at least 75% of people my age, when they're walking, if they're by themselves, they're on their phone. You know, they're walking like this with their head down and scrolling. And for Mike, who spent his night observing during a night out with his wife and found some unexpected entertainment. And unbeknownst to us, karaoke night. <laughs> it was so sweet. There's like some 80-year-old guy 
that was doing a song that nobody knew, but he brought the house down. Things he might not appreciate if he spent the evening buried in his phone. Discoveries he might never have made. Karaoke is certainly, I think it was invented in Japan, but America made it better. And that's exactly what the challenge has been building to. It's why journalist and podcast host Manoush Zamarodi came up with it in the first place. Because we're buried in tech and we're missing so much of life. If we can make it fun and we can give you the science, the data, the stories behind it, and you feel even just a little bit better, why not? Let's do it. So we did it. And many of you did too. Five simple steps you can do every week or once a year. You might be surprised what you learn. But I do think I'm going to delete the Facebook app eventually. I don't know when. And um, I'm going to be better about putting it away when I get home, once I have my son. This has kind of helped uh, spring clean maybe some of my bad habits. That's kind of the pattern I, I guess I'm starting to notice through this. I could be 50% more productive or like X amount more productive if I just put my phone down. It's proof that we can take back control, turn off the dings, and leave our brains free from more creativity and to truly connect with each other. I'm Melissa Luck, KXLY4 News.